Hi, everyone. My name is Lania Quinn Davidson, and I am the Area Fire Advisor for University of California Cooperative Extension up in Humboldt County. And I know you're going to hear a lot from me during this um, workshop because I work a lot on prescribed fire, and um, I'm going to be covering various aspects of it throughout the, the workshop. So for this presentation, I'm going to talk about California's new state certified burn boss program. And um, I think it's, it's important, you, you all have probably heard of certified burner programs in other states, and you kind of wonder what that means, right? Um, in California, we're calling it a state certified burn boss, but really it's in the category of certified burner. And um, that, that really looks different depending on what state you're in. So in Florida, for example, a Florida certified burner um, takes a set of classes and that actually puts them in a different negligence category for liability law. So whereas <clears throat> Florida in general it is a simple negligence state for folks who are just, you know, average citizens doing prescribed fire projects, if you become a certified burner, that actually gives you a gross negligence standard. And so you can watch the liability talk that I'm uh, recording for this workshop to, to learn more about those different categories of liability law. But what we do know is that in Florida, being a certified burner actually changes your status, uh, your liability status. In Georgia, there's also a certified burner program. Um, but in that state, the, the becoming a certified burner doesn't actually change your, your liability status. So everyone in Georgia is subject to a gross negligence liability standard. And the certified burner certainly benefits from the training and the education that comes from the certification, um, but that it doesn't you know, shift their, their liability. In Colorado, um, Colorado is also a state where becoming a certified burner does give you a gross negligence standard where, at, where it wouldn't for your average citizen. But the difference with Colorado is that their program is so rigorous that it actually almost directly reflects the, um, the federal standard that we see for forest service burn bosses or for other folks who work for federal fire management agencies, the NWCG standard, National Wildfire Coordinating Group. And so it's so rigorous that your average person really can't even get to the point where they could become certified in that way. So there are very few certified burn bosses in Colorado that um, are able to take advantage of that gross negligence standard because it is so rigorous. So we see that state by state, these programs really vary. And you know, what's that gonna look like in California? Well, it's interesting because years ago, um, we with the Northern California Prescribed Fire Council, which is kind of an interagency group that works on prescribed fire issues, we were working on some legislation in 2014 that would have required CAL FIRE to develop a public website that really cl would clarify requirements for prescribed fire around permitting and things like that. Um, and then also a uniform burn plan template that would provide standardized procedures associated with planning and implementation of burns. So this was an assembly bill that got introduced, um, Assembly Bill 2465 by West Chesbro. And it flew through with flying colors um, through the, the legislature and was actually vetoed by the governor at the, you know, at the end of the line after it had full bipartisan support. And we actually felt all along that this bill was pretty low hanging fruit. I mean, it, it didn't have anything very substantive in it. It was very, um, it was just kind of an outreach and education thing of having this public website, having a uniform burn plan template. Um, but what we realized is that CAL FIRE had some major discomfort with it because they felt that you couldn't provide a uniform burn plan template in the absence of some kind of certified burner program that would train um, the burners at the same level and give people the knowledge and skills that they need to plan and implement burns. So it was an interesting time because we learned that there was actually support within the agency for the idea of a certified burner program in California. And years later, as we were working on, um, you know, on other bills and thinking about legislative opportunities, that idea of the certified burner kept coming back up. And then the 2017 
fire season happened and the wine country and Thomas fires really kind of unprecedented fire seasons really caught everyone's attention, obviously. And we saw a lot of movement in that following winter and spring um, within in a policy world, trying to think of what what were things that we could do around fire that would really shift the conversation and start to deal with this wicked problem in California. And um, and Hannah Beth Jackson, a state senator from Southern California down in Santa Barbara area, um, she ended up authoring Senate Bill 1260. And um, this bill was completely focused on prescribed fire. It took a lot of different ideas from different stakeholders and you know, other proposed legislation and combined it all into this kind of mega bill that was entirely focused on prescribed fire. And so within that bill, um, I, you know, if you're interested in this, I recommend you go read the bill because it's pretty interesting and it's, um, it's just got so many facets to it. One of the, one of the things that it enabled was for CAL FIRE to collaborate more closely with other with outside partners on prescribed fire projects. And so historically, we'd really seen CAL FIRE being a little more um, insular in their work on prescribed fire. And thanks to Senate Bill 1260, we're seeing them really giving, you know, given the freedom to do more collaborative projects, to work more closely together, not only with other agencies, but with private entities and private landowners. Um, we also saw some, <clears throat> some stuff in that bill for the California Air Resources Board, CARB, to fund and develop a program um, focused on prescribed fire and helping people understand the, the benefits of prescribed fire and the utility. And so we're seeing that reflected in grants that have gone out to all the local air, or to, to I think most of the local air districts um, to help with their prescribed fire programs. And in our district, in the North Coast Unified Air Quality Management District, that funding that came from CARB as a result of Senate Bill 1260 um, has actually funded a grant program to relieve our air quality permit fees in our district, which is huge because our permit fees are very expensive. And um, it's, I think it's really gonna help enable a lot of good work. But the other key part, and perhaps the most surprising part, and most you know, the, the biggest win in the in 1260 was the development of a state certified burn boss program. So we see language in there. Um, it doesn't say certified burner, but it's really about developing a state standard for certified burn boss. And so. Um, this, this state certifica certification is intended for private burners, right? This is not intended for folks who already work for a federal or state fire management agency. Um, the certification is really intended for private, in, you know, private entities who want to plan and lead burns, and they want to have a state standard to recognize their skills and experience and to give them certain opportunities, which I'll talk about. Um, the bill mandated that in order to form this certification and to de design the certification program, that they needed to pull together the, you know, the stakeholders who would be the end user of a product like this, of a, a program like this. So I was selected to serve on the curriculum development cadre, and that happened last summer. There were you know, maybe, I don't know, 10 to 15 people who were selected to come together. We spent many weeks together, actually. In the end, we spent about three weeks together um, throughout the summer and fall designing what this program should look like and designing the curriculum and really trying to wrap our minds around what are the, you know, what would set the standard in California for a private burn boss? Um, the, so we finished up, we drafted the curriculum by the end of September last year. We had that drafted and submitted to the state, and um, this was led by state fire training. And the curriculum is moving through the approval process right now, and the finalized approval is expected this July. So hopefully by this July, we'll see everything kind of finalized, thumbs up. I've heard that there have been very few recommended changes actually only one kind of significant change to the curriculum um, throughout the whole approval process. So we're expecting that that's gonna go pretty smoothly. 
and that the program should roll out officially as in courses would actually be held starting in January 2021. So that's kind of the time frame. And this California State Certified Burn Boss, we're calling it C-A-R-X. So that would be like the shortened name of, you know, once you're certified that you would have that qualification as C-A-R-X. So what's the benefit of this? You know, we looked at those other states. We understand that it looks different in all the different states where there are certified burner programs. It looks really different. In California, this is not going to change our negligence law. So we're not going to suddenly go from being a simple negligence state to being a gross negligence state. But in some ways, we are seeing liability relief because what the bill does and what the certified burn, the state certified burn boss program does is it offers opportunities for liability sharing with CAL FIRE through the permit process. And we don't know exactly what that's going to look like yet. That's, I think, you know, still in the works within CAL FIRE. But we are going to see some process of assigning liability and proportioning liability between the certified burn boss and CAL FIRE. And that'll depend on some, you know, on co the complexity of the project, on the level of CAL FIRE involvement, and other factors are going to feed into this liability proportioning. Um, what we do see in the bill is that they don't expect that the state certified burn boss would ever assume more than 75% of the liability for the burn. Um, and so there'd always be some kind of partnership between CAL FIRE and the state certified burn boss. We also see language in there that implies that there could be um, suppression support for burns led by the state certified burn boss operating within their permit parameters. So if you're a state certified burn boss, you're doing everything to the best of your ability, you have the permit, you're burning in prescription, something weird happens and goes wrong, and you need to call in additional resources to help you, you know, get the fire under control, that that would be a benefit afforded by this, um, by this new system enabled by SB 1260. So again, we don't know exactly what that's going to look like. But I think that um, it's recognizing that, you know, someone who's gone through the state certified burn boss program, someone who's really trying their best to be diligent and cover their bases, deserves to have that relationship with CAL FIRE and potentially that, that suppression support if something goes wrong. Um, there's also a lot of effort underway right now to develop insurance options for state certified burn boss um, and for other prescribed burners throughout the country. So um, those, those details are not public yet, but just know that there is, um, there is movement to try to create insurance options for prescribed fire, and CAL FIRE is working hard on that. There was actually a bill in 2018 that passed at the same time that SB 1260 did, um, Assembly Bill 2091, and that bill mandated that, um, that the governor's task force work with the Department of Insurance to come up with some insurance, you know, ins to investigate insurance opportunities. And we're seeing that the state is doing that. They're really trying to figure it out. And there are some other groups that are working on this as well. So potential benefits to landowners. Now, I know the audience for this workshop, we have a lot of folks who um, are, you know, foresters or other, technical experts who work with landowners, um, but what, so if you're, but if you're a landowner, and I know we have some landowners in the audience, what are the benefits to you? Well, for one, this could open up a whole pool of qualified contractors who could plan and lead burns in the state of California. And that's huge because right now we don't have a lot of contractors who can do this kind of work. Um, for the most part, you know, when we hire a contractor, we don't have a state standard, so we end up defaulting to the federal standard, which is really quite rigorous. And, um, and you're not going to find a federal employee who's still employed and still active in their job who's willing to, to go out on a limb and work on private lands or be a contractor for a private landowner. Really, we're relying on retired folks who had those qualifications when they worked for the federal agency but now have moved on to you know, running their own company. Um, or a couple private companies who have been able to figure out how to adhere to the federal qualifications, even though they don't work within that system. So 
we have only a handful of private contractors who are burn bosses in the state of California. And this is really going to open up opportunity for other people to become qualified so that we can hire them. And this is really going to help reduce bottlenecks um, for cost share and grant programs. And in particular, I'm thinking of agencies like the Natural Resources Conservation Service, NRCS, who has really gotten on board with supporting prescribed fire projects and um, helping fund not only the prep and the burn planning, but also the implementation of burns. But they currently, in their state policy, um, they require a federally qualified type two burn boss. Now that's just because they need some kind of standard to point to. And in California, we haven't had a standard. So I'm really seeing an opportunity here as the CARX is finalized and rolled out that agencies like NRCS are going to be able to change their policies to recognize that state standard and, um, and then move forward with projects and have a lot more opportunity for folks to, to lead and to plan burns. And for landowners to be the you know to be able to get funding for that through those cost share programs like Equip, um, I know the Fish and Wildlife Service is thinking about how their partners program might be able to support more prescribed fire. So there's a lot there are a lot of moving pieces, and I think the CARX qualification is really going to open a lot of doors. Um, the landowner could also become a state certified burn boss. So if if there's a landowner out there who has a lot of prescribed fire experience and wants to be able to lead projects, um, wants to be able to get some of that liability relief for projects on their own properties, um, or is working with their local prescribed burn association and wants to take on more of a leadership role and do more burn bossing through that, um, this is a perfect opportunity for that kind of private person to get more experience, to adhere to the state standard, and then to open all of those doors. So what are the potential benefits to the registered professional forester and to other professionals who are working in this field, who I'm guessing are a lot of you who are watching this, this talk? Well, for one, this is a realistic prescribed fire certification route for non-fire professionals. So um, we have not had anything like this historically because if you were a private person wanting to become a federally qualified burn boss, you would need many years of wildland fire experience. So you you really you couldn't meet that standard, that federal NWCG standard, without having worked in fire on a on a fire crew and in most cases, you know, for a decade or more. That is a very rigorous standard that requires a lot of fire suppression experience. And um, so now we have this new option opening up for folks who you know, we still expect that, that they're going to have prescribed fire experience and be knowledgeable and skilled in this field, but not require that fire suppression background. And that's critical. That's a, it's been a huge conversation in the prescribed fire community for years because we need to have burn bosses who aren't fire suppression folks because that's the only way to increase that, that pool of expertise. Um, of course, like I talked about on the previous slide, you also have potential access to prescribed fire insurance and to liability sharing with CAL FIRE. So if you have any interest in, um, in doing more prescribed fire work and being able to lead that, and you want to you know, have access to those insurance opportunities and to the liability sharing that's been enabled through SB 1260, you would want to pursue this certification. Uh, this is just really also a you know, bigger picture great opportunity to expand your professional portfolio to include burn planning and implementation. The reality is that there are a lot of counties and a lot of communities in California that are really getting on board with the prescribed burn association model and with private lands burning and community-based burning, and they need skilled folks who can plan and implement burns. And, um, and so there is an opportunity here there's a professional opportunity to get into this field and to build your skills and expertise and to become certified so that you can fill that gap because currently there's a huge gap there and um, a real need for, for additional expertise and, and contractors. So what is this gonna look like? What's, what's this program actually entail? 
And uh, this is all, of course, in draft proposed form because um, the, the curriculum hasn't been fully approved yet and it won't be approved fully until this summer. So please remember as I go through this that th some things could change, although we don't anticipate that it'll change very much because it's passed through most levels of approval at this point. But the curriculum includes prerequisites, in-person coursework, and then a task book at the end. And so the prerequisites, I'm not going to go into detail on the prereqs because I think, um, I don't think that they're ready to be shared. And I, I think that state fire training would prefer that we, that we wait to roll that out until it's fully approved. But I do want to note that this certification is really intended for experienced burners. This is not a program that is intended, that is intended for entry level folks who are just interested in getting prescribed fire experience. I have other opportunities for, for you if you are entry level and you've never been on a burn and you really want to get into this, then um, give me a call, shoot me an email, and I'll hook you up with some, some opportunities. We, you know, there are prescribed fire training exchanges, there are um, prescribed burn associations that, that need new members. There's a lot of opportunity out there, but this certification is really intended for experienced burners. Um, the, there will be, as part of the prerequisites, required coursework, and we tried to make that a, as much online as possible to, you know, because we know that folks like you are going to have to take work off to go do this. You're going to have to travel. Um, you know, anytime you're required to take an in-person class, it makes it harder for you. So we really tried to um, lean toward online coursework. Uh, and then as well as hands-on experience. So um, there are going to be requirements that you prove that you have pretty deep experience with firing, so with the actual leading of ignitions on prescribed burns, um, and then also with leadership. And this doesn't have to be in a fire setting, but you need to be able to demonstrate that you have led a crew and that as a burn boss that you know you know how to to lead other people and to keep them safe. So there are going to be various ways that we ask you to prove that, including both certificates from the coursework as well as some experience experiential demonstration, like paper forms basically where you can highlight and demonstrate your experience your past experience. So my advice to you, um, as you, you know, as you're thinking about this, if you're thinking that you might be in that category of experienced burner who could potentially jump on this when this gets rolled out next year, um, make sure you're caught up on online coursework. And a great start would be S13190, just the, you know, the basic courses that all firefighters take. You can look those up online. Um, there are NWCG courses. And you can do them online and get the certificates online. And um, and I, I recommend doing that. It would be a great thing to just get under your belt, especially while you're sitting at home during this COVID crisis. And then, you know, additionally, just take every opportunity you can to seek, um, to seek opportunities on burns. So if you can get out on a burn with your local prescribed burn association, or if you can get out on a TREX, um, and gain more experience and demonstrate your experience, especially with leading ignitions. You know, if you're able to get on a burn and help lead a flank of the fire, um, help think about firing patterns, things like that, that's really gonna help you when you decide to, to move forward with the certification. And um, another thing to note is that there will likely be a grandfathering period for the first year of the certification program. And that will be intended to um, take folks who we know are experienced, you know, retired fire professionals, um, other folks who just have a lot of prescribed fire experience and can demonstrate that fairly easily. Um, there will there will likely be a grandfathering period. So you're going to want to be able to jump on that and, and get in there if you think you can take advantage of that. So what is the actual course going to look like? Um, it's likely going to be a 40 hour in person class. So it's a full week, five days, and it's going to cover a range of topics. And the way we approached it when we developed the curriculum is that we want it to be, you know, a burn boss is not just 
someone who understands buyer behavior. They're someone who understands the whole package of things that go into organizing and implementing a burn. So for one, they need to kind of understand the basic history and ecology of fire in California, um, permits and liability. They need to understand burn planning. That's a big portion of the class is how do you actually plan a burn, put together a burn plan. Um, smoke management using things like PFERS, the online system for smoke management. Um, and then the actual day of burn and kind of what are the what are the things you need to be thinking about on the day of the burn? How do you organize the crews? How do you develop an incident action plan? Um, how do you make the appropriate notifications and all of that? So those are the kinds of things that will be covered during that 40 hour class. Um, and in the task book, so this would be after the class, is you'll have an opportunity to prove your competency in organizing and leading burns. And um, this will be the kind of final, you know, the final step of the certification is really demonstrating that you are competent. And then um, every year after that to maintain your certification, you would be required to do an annual refresher course. And that's the same as, um, you know, any fire professional actually does a refresher course every year just to kind of remind you of all the critical things and to keep you on your toes. Um, so that's a, kind of a wrap on the state certified burn boss program and the, you know, I know that there's a lot more detail that could be provided, but I think at this stage, because it's still in draft form, it's important not to get too far ahead of ourselves. And we'll see what it looks like when it rolls out in July. And um, please email me if you have questions or if you want to be on, I have a little mailing list I'm starting for folks who are interested so that when this does roll out, we can let you know. And um, Jeff Stackhouse and I also wrote a small grant and we will be, we'll have some funding available to support some scholarships for people as they think about attending that certification class. So let us know if you're interested in that. My email's right here, and um, thanks so much for your time. I hope this was useful. <laughs>